everybody. Welcome. My name is uh, Ronan. I just came here to as requested by people from the community and friends that are using Schwab API how to create their own app, their web app for their personal use. So, and it's always better to have your own personal use that you can filter and use and show only the data that you want. And actually, it's not a lot of work. Um, I also integrated here that I can uh, buy and sell, but this I will not show this here. So what I've built, and uh, I will also send you the code, is that you can search for a symbol, uh, get the quote data from the API, and get the option chain for this uh, for the symbol based on the dates that I find that are uh, interesting and the columns that I want to see, and I can also select the checkbox and submit that I can actually sell this strike price as contract. Okay, so what are we going to do today? I'm going to explain the Streamlight integration with uh, Schwab API. This is a Python package that was created by uh, Tyler here. <clears throat> Very recommended. Uh, I think that's the only one and really new one that he just created based on the API that they released just, I think, a couple of weeks ago. And it works really nice and fast. He did really great work. And there's examples how to run your code. And he has his own YouTube channel that you can see how to integrate and create a developer account for Schwab and some examples that he has created. And from there, I took it and I wanted to create an app that I can have a nice UI, a web UI that I can view and interact with the, with the API. I find it much more easier. And doing this, you have a couple of options. Or you create an app in JavaScript and HTML. Or you can, nowadays, there are a, lot of, a couple of packages that get you, that you can do it in Python. So you don't need to learn another language. Or, and just use, from your Python, create uh, the web app. And I'm doing this with Streamlight. I have tried uh, Gradio from Hug and Face. I use it sometimes for small projects, for machine learning projects and AI projects. And it's very lean and easy to create and run. And also you can share it with the public very easily and free. Big community behind it. There's a new one that I tried also. It's from Mizop from uh, Google. They have this. They have a, a GitHub repository with all kind of examples and how to use it. But I started to use it. It's very new. Not a lot of examples, and you have to write a lot of code to get something uh, working and running. And so I tried. After that, I tried uh, Streamlight, and I found that that's what I will be using. It's, and I found it really easy, and it's actually really nice that you can ask uh, ChatGPT for to help you write the code and bring up. You know, you don't start with a clean sheet anymore nowadays. You just ask Chat to start this for you, and it helps you through the way, and it's really nice. I recommend to use that for getting your code very to get create code faster. Anyway, okay. So I'll go over the basic code. Uh, I'll send you a link to where everything is, what I've implemented, and what I'm showing you. So you can maybe it will help you start and move forward from there. And you can always ask me questions uh, through my email. OK, after this uh, intro, let's look at the code and see how you can get started. OK, this is our code. It's actually a Python file. It's called app UI. You can call it whatever name you want. At the end, I'll show you how to run it. So what is here spe special for Streamlight is that we import, of course, a package. And we have here, we're setting that this page will be split into two columns. So any output I put under the left column is going to be on the left side. And if it's going to be 
I'm going to write the right column. It's going to be on the right side. So that's it. Um, it's very interesting and good to learn about session state in Streamlight. I'm not going to go over this. And if you're interested, you can read about it in the documentation, but it's important factor. OK. We're going to start. Everything starts with the start flow. This is the first function, function that runs. But the first, I would like to show you that I've created a cached resource. That's, it's called gate client that returns the, the API connection. And I have put cache resource that is going, not going to be created every time that this function is going to be called. It's going to just return the client when it's called. And only in the first time, it's going to create a connection. OK, let's go to start flow. And if you remember, there's a form in the begin on the top of the page. See, this is the form. It's an enter symbol, a text input, and a submit. And this is what I'm doing right over here. There's a form, text input, to enter this, and a submit. Once the submit is clicked, I take the input that I have, create it, uh, make it uppercase, and also the strip out. Sometimes people forget white spaces, remove it also, and process the symbol. What it does is brings the quote information from the API for, the, for this symbol and displays this. This is right over here happening. So here I'm getting the client and using the API to, for quote, bringing only the regular information. There's a lot of other information you can read uh, in the API in the dev developer site. What else you can add here? And on the right side, I, I put the symbol and as in the data frame or in a table, I can actually put all the information that's coming back from the API, and it looks just like this. It's all this part, you see, that is on the right side, and just brings the regular market life price, and the size, the net change, and yeah. So, and here we have the options. Hi, everybody. My name is uh, Ronan. And I'm here to show you an example of how to integrate Streamlight with uh, Schwab API on a Python package. So let's start with the everybody that's using now Schwab API is using this Python package that was created by uh, Tyler. Um, it's really nice uh, Python package, very easy to start to work with the API. He explains here how to get the developer key and all the information, how to getting started. So it's very good that you have an uh, API and you can see information in your command line, but I prefer to see it uh, as, an, uh, as a web app. And that's why I'm using uh, the Streamlight which is the framework that uh, from your Python, Python code, you can create a web app. That's really good because then you don't have to know HTML, JavaScript, and other things that have and create API calls between those uh, from the client and the backend, let's say. So this is really a useful uh, tool. There are other to tools like it that I've tried, and sometimes I'm using you have the alternative that's called Gradio. It's really nice application, very easy to integrate and use. It's from Hugging Face. It's mainly for a data scientists that can want to show their what they're doing very fast. And it's really nice. Um, then we have a Mesop that is quite new, done by uh, Google. I tried to working with it a little bit, but it takes uh, some time to write the code, and I find that it seems like for me is gives what I need, and it's very it all what I need is actually integrated there, so it's easier to get started and uh, do what you what I need it to do. So 
I started doing it, and in one day I already had an app that I had a symbol I could uh, search. And what I wanted to see actually is very basic: is uh, get the symbol price and the option chain for the symbol. Select the option chain I want to sell or buy, and submit. All this done through the app that I've uh, created. So. How do you get your Streamlight to work? So uh, I'll do this very fast, very basic. Um, if you want more information, just put it in the comments. I'll try to help and maybe create a more in-depth uh, video. So just let me know, OK? Now, to get started, you need to pip install the package of Streamlight. Add this uh, just up here. This will do all the magic for you from now on. So now that you remember that I have a form that I'm using, so we're going to start with the start flow. Here I'm creating the form. See how it, it's easy it is? You just uh, declare the form where you want it on the page. Uh, what is the text input that you want to have, and the submit button? Very easy. When once the submit is clicked, this is this is called this part of the function, and I'm I'm just here cleaning uh, that I can have uppercase uh, symbol, and stripping white spaces and processing the symbol. Processing the symbol is quite. I'm doing two kind of API queries here. One uh, to get the quote information and uh, and to get the option chain. So what we have here, when I click the submit, I have this, this simple information, just the basics, and the option chain. What else is interesting? So how do you display data on the on the page? So once you have the data and what you want to do, very simply, you just write S S T. So that's Streamlit. Write and what you want it to do to write. Write a row. Uh, write text. Uh, you can write uh, tables. You can write a data frame. Uh, whatever you want. So that's the whole code I have here for this. That has also the logic and also the UI and. Getting the data from about the options and cleaning that, that data is a separate class that I've created, which I also put together for you so you can see it, uh, an example of how, how I'm doing it and how I'm using filters there. Um, let me see. How, let me show you just to say very fast how I work with the Streamlight. Uh, Flow. So how the development goes. So here you have Streamlit is running. Let me just stop it so you can see how I'm running Streamlit. So just Streamlit run and the Python code. Okay, this is starting. So we're gonna do maybe a small change on the page. Uh, maybe add some more information. So you understand how I do this just now connecting so it take a couple of seconds but actually what we want to do say now it's connected so where we dis display the information about the quote yeah well, okay this is actually the code that brings the quote from the api so i have the client the connection and uh, what which symbol i want what kind of data i want from the api and then i place I actually use here uh, the markdown, so it displays it more nicely here. Yeah. What did I, what did I, I didn't. I don't have a symbol, so I'm giving it in. So let's do a volunteer. Okay. Let's say I want to see the all the data that's coming back from the API, so I do like write data frames, 
actually returning a table, so I can put here just to show that the the difference. You see, I'm running directly, it's, and I can see that this is a data frame. If I change it to a table, I and have to do rerun, submit, and it's actually showing it in the same way. Let's say I want to do to show you what is the how much it changed from the opening. So what I do here, you see I have this right corner markdown, last price. I've got it from here. Let's add another line. We wanted to do market change. OK, market change. And you want to show this. Okay, mark. I think that's it. Yeah. Put it this here. Go here. Submit. Fresh. Oh, I still have the table here. I need to remove it. And that's it, it's gone. So I have the symbol. Oh, this is actually the price. Last price. So I have the symbol, last price, market change, how many points moved, and the and then this table with all the strikes up for this symbol. Okay, so that's it. That's what I wanted to show you. I hope this helps you and let me know if I can help you any more. If you need more information, let me know. And uh, thank you for all this community behind the API of Schwab. Uh, it's very helpful and 